I didn't want to do it. I wasn't thinking about doing it. I had to do it. And it was a show fishing with a good friend of mine, John Cruz. I'm John Cruz, professional bass angler, and I'm the owner of Missile Baits. We've known each other for a very long time. We've competed against each other in the pro ranks, and we've traveled together. You know, I actually wanted to fish with John. Not talk about fishing, not compare notes, not hang out. I love all that stuff too, but I actually wanted to share the boat with John and fish as a team. I don't know, the last time it's been three, four, five years at least since I fished with Mike. Instead of just being a random fishing show, we were gonna make this a show where we used the missile jigs. You know, that's important to me because I'm proud of the baits, you know? These are two jigs that I helped John design. I've won some tournaments with them already, but I wanted to film with a bait that I designed, and that pride that you take with that is really important. Man, I was stoked because this is gonna be the first time I've actually been to the missile headquarters. For some reason in my mind, you know, I just thought, you know, John's factory was, I don't know, like just this little place, like a little igloo sort of on the side of the road. And I pull up and man, it's this amazing place. I am stoked. I cannot wait to get inside and have John show me around. I made it. My buttocks has fallen asleep. You finally drive him from sea? I brought something home from to the missile plant. Something that belongs here. Yeah, it's long overdue. You want to see it? Y'all want to see it. Come on. Look at this. She's coming home. I want to show you what's coming home. And here's the bait. There it is. That actually is bringing this home. This is your home. Get in your home. Go to your home. She's coming home, John. There she is. She's home. The Delaware River. She's home, baby. Come on. Let's Go to your it. home. Let's take it in. Go to your home. And it's a trophy from a tournament I won in 2014 on the Delaware River that the Missile Mini Flip Jig helped me win. You know, I wanted to bring the trophy here because it was like bringing the trophy home. You know, he showed me the headquarters and the factory and I'm blown away. I'm blown away by everything John has accomplished with this business. So proud of him. It's amazing to watch it grow in the time that I've known him. So many people think that they use a bait, they pull it out of the pack, they don't know the process behind it. I wanna talk about that with you. And I'm proud of this one. This is one that we worked on together and I'm proud of this thing. Well, there's the, there's the easy way and then there's the hard way. Right. We take the hard way because the hard way is the way you make it how you want it. You can make a jig or a soft plastic or a crankbait and basically copy somebody else's model. Generic. Copy, yeah, copy yeah. what somebody else has done. But to take something and, and improve it and make you know, wholesale improvements is a lot of work. But, but dude, this thing was a concept. This right. thing was went from an idea that we had to a drawing, to a sketch, to a prototype, to right. a working sample. Yep. I mean, that's a cool process. Talk a little bit about that. The mini flip, we wanted it to be weight forward. We wanted to, as much of that weight forward as possible. Weight forward design. We wanted that weight of the jig to be balanced around the hook shaft. And what that does is it keeps it from rolling as you're pulling on it. And we wanted a large bite. We wanted the, the line tie to be lower, the hook point to be higher, so that you had the, the maximum amount of bite that you could get in a, in a compact short jig. That was Big important. bite, good hook, and a little jig, which before and this wasn't, wasn't, wasn't available. No, you no, couldn't get it. Not. To, to put all of that together, that's tough, man. It's, it's tough. tough. And it, I mean, we I had to challenge our manufacturer to, to make it all fit in there. And lo and behold, they got it. And 
man, that thing turned out awesome. It's been so fun working with you on these jigs, John. Yeah. I can't tell you how fun it's been playing with design, shape, color, getting to actually win tournaments on this thing. It's That's been right. so fun. But now I'm gonna put the pressure on you. What's that? And we're gonna film tomorrow. We're gonna shoot mm -hmm. a show. We've gotta catch bass on these things. We're in the fall, the temperatures are cooling off. Jig should be on. Jig I should mean, be it, on. It should be on. Okay, because so, this is, we're, we're gonna take this. This is a jig show. Right. What, what happens, happens. What happens, that's right. It's gonna be the tail of the tape. using the missile mini flip jig. Yep. We're gonna be using the new head banger. Yep. And the goal is to try to catch a mix of small mouth and large mouth. Yeah, yeah, you know, the Highland Reservoirs, that's what lives there. So when you get a bite, you're not sure exactly what you're gonna set your hook into. You've got, you've had surgery, like literally like a week, a little, little more than a week yeah, ago. Yeah, about a week and a half ago, I had a, uh, had a torn meniscus. Dad's taking me in, gonna go get my knee fixed. And when they do that, the recovery is a lot faster. And so that's why I'm able to, to stand and okay. walk. And I'm, I'm getting better every day. Doc McStuffins to uh, fix me up and she's gonna take care of me. So I think I'm in pretty good hands. And we meet a guy, Mark. Mark is gonna be our tow driver. Talk a little bit about, I noticed you've got a little boat. I've got this big giant boat. I can't use my outboard today. So you're gonna be not only our quasi guide, but you're gonna be our tow truck today. Tell me a little bit about that. They limit the horsepower rating. If you wanna fish with a bigger boat, it's not any problem. I, you know, hook them up and, and drag them. That's and awesome. that's, that's the, you know, it, it, that's the quick way to get from point A to point B is just, just let me drag. And it's a lake that's, you know, really just a, a highland reservoir with a lot of rock, you know, and hard bottom drops. And one of the first things John and I notice is the water clarity. And you know, John makes a mention that it's a lot dirtier. It's a lot more stained than it typically is. But something was going on with it, with the water being a little more stained than normal. You know, for about the first hour of fishing, I gotta tell you, it's a lot slower than either of us expected. Golly, that makes you nuts, huh? I'm going three quarter. A little heavier. Yep. A little more. Black and blue, get a little darker. Yeah. The water temperature's in the 50s. Typically when it gets like that, the fish are gonna start feeding up, biting like crazy. We're both kind of a little concerned in the beginning, but we both know that this is a puzzle. Fishing's like a puzzle, and we've just gotta figure out the pieces, and we gotta get our first bite. There he is. Dropped it. And he gets his first bite, and it's what I would call a rock transition bank. It kind of has this black, dark colored rock on the side of, of a pocket heading in from the main lake. Hit like a smallmouth, huh? Yeah, it did. Yeah. You know, we're getting a couple bites, but we realize that these fish are not eating for some reason. And you know, maybe this, this cold weather that we've had in the weeks preceding this fishing trip, maybe it's had an effect on the way they're eating. On the board, number one. Start, start with one. Yes, sir. Right on the bank. Yep. That's maybe the deal. So, you know, we've got a little momentum and we feel like, you know, maybe we know what we need to do now. We're gonna start targeting these steeper, rockier banks. We make a little move around the island. I throw out there, get a bite and miss it. And, you know, at that moment, I think both of us really had a realization that, man, this could be, this could be a really, really tough day. You know, when they're hitting like that, I don't care if you're using a finesse worm or a crankbait or a jig, you know, those fish are non-committal. But one of the things we have working for us is we're fishing jigs. And I can tell you in all the years that I've fished, when things get tough, when the fishing's tough, dirty water, cold front conditions, everything we're dealing with today, the absolute best bait you could throw is a jig. Slow and low, creeping it on the bottom, um, really 
force feeding those fish to bite. So we're doing the right thing and we just gotta grind it out. We make a short move across the lake to what I would consider more of a main lake, rocky, bluffy area, more of a winter type bank. There you go. Big in. Oh, big in. Brown one. Yeah, good. That's a big one, bro. Yeah. That'll work. That'll work. Went to the darker mini foot. Yeah, went to the darker mini foot. A little chunkier bank. Nice. Ooh. Small jaws. Nice. That's a keeper. He thumped it and he's running right off the bank. Back in there, baby. And man, I'm excited because one of our goals was to catch a large mouth and small mouth today. We continued down that bank, but it really didn't pan out the way we thought it was gonna pan out. So we just gotta keep covering water. We gotta keep treading ground and keep covering water. You know, we decide to make an area change and we head up the lake a little bit. Here we go. We just made a long move. Got towed to a prime area. It's coming off plain. Coming off pad. We're about to get busy. Come on. Let's go. You are the large mouth fisherman. That's it. Out of his throat, too. You can barely get a bite, but then when you get a bite, it's absolutely gone. Down nice. his throat. Nice. He's a good fish. Yeah. Three eighths. Got orange in it. Green yeah. pumpkin orange. Key deal. Pretty one. Hit 8,752 pieces of wood and I finally get a bite. And it just reinforces that we're doing the right thing. We gotta keep grinding it out and we're gonna get our bites. John, a couple hours in. Yep. Tough bite. It is. I, I don't know if the water water temperature dropping had, had anything to do with it, but we've, we've gotten a number of bites, but we haven't even caught half of the bites that we've gotten. I'm hopeful though, we you know we have eliminated some stuff. They're yep. definitely not on the flatter banks. They're on the steeper banks. That rock is key. Yep. Uh, brown and orange, or green pumpkin and orange seems pretty key. It does, I, you know, I did catch that one on, on the bruiser and the black and blue. I'm, I'm gonna go back to it for a little bit and see if we can't, can't get something going on that. Yeah, well we still have a lot of time left. It's, uh, let's keep fishing. I got a feeling that as this water warms just a little bit as the day goes on, that bite's gonna pick up. Very, very well cut. Very cool. well cut. You know, I got into designing baits, uh, crank baits first of all. Just loved the whole process and got to understand it gets from an idea in your head to becoming a crank bait that's been fully tested and, and all that kind of stuff. So then I wanted to do it with soft plastics. I had all these ideas in my head. I mean, just a whole bunch of different things. So I started making all these different drawings and started missile baits. You know, it's one of the things in fishing that I love to do, you know, to go from a freaking sketch on a piece of paper to get everything perfect right. before you send me one of these and I get to sample it and get to try it. Dude, there's, dude that's so fun to me. I, I that, love it. It's so cool. You know, and then the other part is I know that you get the same thing too, is guys catch, oh, I caught my personal best on your, yeah. on your head banger, man. That, I love that jig. And just hearing that kind of stuff yep. is, is really cool because you know that you created something that helped them catch more fish. Yes. Because if they're catching personal bass or if they're having a record day they've never had before, it's not it's not luck. Yeah. It's something to the design of the bait that's helping them catch more and bigger fish. I mean, and that's that's the whole deal. It's it's very rewarding, and I can tell you the success that you've had is based off that innovation. Big and John. <laughs> We look at our watch and it's already after three o'clock. You know, we've got a short window. By about 4.45, it's dark. So we're really down to what I would consider the last push of the day. We make an area change to a really long, flat main lake point with a submerged silo on the end. John makes a switch to a headbanger. The missile headbanger jig is more of a football style jig and it's excellent for fishing around rock cover. Uh oh. There you go. That's the one. Giant. Oh! That's the one. Big one, John. Oh, I'm good. That's a big one. Yep. <laughs> Bam. Bam, babe. Nice one. Yeah. Oh, Lord. He wants my lunch. 
Three plus. Yeah. Three plus, baby. Woohoo! On the uh, headbanger. Head banger. Show that jig. That's a headbanger. Headbanger! And now we're really getting dialed in to the color being the most important factor on that jig today. We've switched trailers, caught them on different trailers, but almost every good fish we've caught today has come on a green pumpkin orange combination. And it's so important to pay attention to those little details. Now we know we're throwing the right color, we decide to make an area change back to where we had bites earlier in the day. Get in here, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Finally on some wood. Yeah. Nice. That orange again. Orange. 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 You know, one of the things that I notice, and I always try to watch other fishermen out there and pick up on things. One of the things I notice John is doing different than I'm doing with his jig and, and his rod position in his body is, man, he's passing gas. <laughs> I turn my head, I don't, I can't tell if somebody's got a, a squeak gun. You know, he's really lighting them up back there. Oops. I'm sorry, I'm just a little excited. Oh! There's a new HydroWave sound it's called Flatulent. A lot of people are not familiar with it. It's a pro only download. But there's all this gas in the air and it's definitely helping John. And I'm, I'm mad because I don't have any gas today. That's a key, that's a key sound. Works, works well. Oh, you. Big one, big one, big one, big one, big one, big one, big one. It's a big one. I can't, I can't don't do that. <laughs> I thought it was bigger than Yeah. <laughs> Air bubble in my butt. Oh, yes. Air bubble in my Air butt. butt. Headbanger, baby. Yes. <laughs> Full throttle, loaded diaper. Wow. He absolutely clobbered it. Way out there too, bro. Yeah, that one I just had, he just, he, he thumped it. He was swimming with it, and then when I went to reel down, I think he just totally missed it. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is what I call the magic hour. You know, it's the last 30 minutes of light in the day. We really feel like things are gonna happen. And we make a decision to get Mark to tow us back to that main lake, steep, rocky bluff bank right near the dam. And we feel like that's our last best chance to catch a few in 15 minutes. There you go. Get him, John, get him, John. That's a big one. Oh, big smallmouth, big smallmouth, big smallmouth. Get him in the boat. Yeah, <laughs> get him in the boat. Tiny Tim, put him in the boat. Yeah! yeah! I knew that was going to happen. Ooh, big smallmouth. I knew that was going to happen. Beautiful fish, bro. Mini flip, baby. Bam. Beautiful fish. Unbelievable, man. I'm, we're high-fiving. I'm stoked out of my mind. And we're scrambling, but we keep casting. We keep casting. Green pumpkin orange. Key bait today. What do you say, Mike? Never give up. We never give up, man. Nice large, man. Bro, good job. Awesome. Good day on the water. Yes. I don't get to fish with you a lot. I know. It was an awesome day. I know. We got to do it more often. Yeah, it was fun. We, uh, tough day. We worked and worked and worked. We picked at them. At the very end, we had a nice little flurry. And, and the flurry continues. <laughs> The flurry, <laughs> the flurry continues. This is a good fish. To... Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Don't give him that jig. Another mini flip. A good way to end the day. Yeah. <laughs> good way to end the day. We had a good day. We figured him out. We had a flurry at the end. And we caught them all 
on missile jigs today. Pretty Mini awesome flip day. and the headbanger. Both of them both. We had to, we had to go back and forth yep. between the two. Uh, seemed like orange was the key. We caught key. a couple on bruiser, but yeah. orange at the bammer crawl was, was definitely key on, key on both jigs. Key bait. Yep. Yep. Good day, bro. Awesome. Okay. Let's head to the house. Put him back. <laughs> Good way to oh, end the day cute, right there, man. man. Really an amazing day. Not only to get to fish with a friend, a friend that I've known for a lot of years, but a chance to fish with missile jigs, with a bait that we designed, especially under tough conditions. And the pride that comes into that, there's no other feeling like that. And I gotta tell you, we got more jigs in the works, and there's gonna be more shows in the future. It's gonna be good. See ya. No. For information on the product and gear used in this show, go to MikeIconelli.com and follow me on my social feeds at Mike Iaconelli. And if you want to help grow the sport of fishing, get kids involved. Go to theikefoundation.org to figure out information on how you could help get involved in getting kids fishing.